<laughs> Holy cow. Okay. Bright suns, everyone. Bright suns. It's Craig. And Denny. And we are on the planet Batu in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. Yay. Very exciting. Yep. The, uh, the big news this week out of Galaxy's Edge is that Docking Bay 7 has received a pretty extensive menu change. Yes, they have. There's like five new things, right, Craig? Yeah, five new things. They took away some of the old favorites and replaced some of them with hopefully what will be um, new favorites. I really hope so, because I had some favorites on that old menu. Yeah, and we are going to try them all. But before we do that, I need to remind you that this is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel. If you like our content and you want to support us, please consider booking your next vacation through Dreams Unlimited Travel. It costs you no extra money and it supports us. So head on over to dreamsunlimitedtravel.com for a free no obligation quote today. I am hungry. I am too. And we have a lot to eat. Yes, we do. Four entrees and oh, one dessert. I feel like we need to go run around a little bit to, yeah. you know, make sure we are, we have the appetite. But yeah. I think we can do it. I think so too. We should have brought Tupperware just in case. <laughs> yes, we, I don't have any Tupperware. Yeah, I don't oh, have any no. with me or, or good ones at home that I'd like to bring in a theme park. It doesn't matter. Let's go try to eat all the food and hopefully it's good. Let's go over the five new dishes here at Docking Bay 7. We've got a lot of things to cover. There will not be a pop quiz, so you'll be fine. Here we go. Very first thing, we've got the Patuan Beef Crispy Tapato Stir Fry. It's $18.99, and it's smoky braised beef glazed in tamarind sauce, served with stir-fried vegetables, crispy herb, yucca, pickled onions, and cilantro. Next up, we've got the roasted Andorian chicken salad for $13.99. Marinated chicken, mixed greens, shaved onion and radish, grapes, tomato, and cucumber, and a lemon pomegranate vinaigrette with spiced yogurt drizzle. Next up, we've got the Pure Janad hot chicken tip yip for $15.49. Crispy chicken, sweet chipotle glaze, white rice, relish of sweet corn, shishito peppers, jicama, and plantains, and cilantro. Uh, next, we've got the Pekka Tuna Poke for $17.99. Raw tuna tossed in a spicy sriracha dressing, served with green pep papaya salad, pickled mushrooms, fresh herbs, and crispy garlic. And finally, and I have to admit, this is the one I'm looking forward to the very most. It's the Outpost Puff. It's the new dessert item on the menu for $6.99. Chocolate pastry filled with guajillo chocolate mousse and green milk sauce, finished with a Thai tea panna cotta, spiced pineapple, and confectionery debris. I can't wait to find out what exactly constitutes confectionery debris. We'll see. And the kind folks here at Docking Bay 7 were nice enough to give us two completely empty bowls so that way we can kind of make our own buffet here and pick and choose a little bit of all the dishes here that we do want to try. And of course, we're gonna share what we think along the way. So let's dig in. All right, I am going into my first dish with a bit of a tear of sadness because my favorite Batuan beef pot roast, the former braised shack roast, is no longer on the menu. It was $18.99 and I used to come in specifically into this park just for that dish. So, I, I have faith though. It's gonna be okay. Well, well, we'll see if it's gonna be okay. So I am trying the, uh, the Batuan beef crispy tapato stir fry and I've got some fried yucca going on here that I'm gonna try to cut with my fork real quick. And uh, one thing that was really good is that the, the beef is tender enough to fall apart. That was the case before. And um, I'm glad that we've got that going on and we have napkins going, so watch out. Here we go. So it says smoky braised beef. 
what is going on here is a lot, it's more heat than smoke. So yes, I, I'm picking up the smoky flavor, but I'm also picking up heat. So if you are sensitive to spicy food, just go into it knowing there's some heat going on behind it. Um, but that, all that being said, it's good. It's got a really good flavor. And I'm not somebody who like is head over heels over spicy, spicy food. I will eat it, but I'm not over the, you know, I'm not like, oh, give me more. Like Craig and Rhino, they love spicy things. However, this is, I, I can handle this. I can handle this and it's good. It's got a good flavor to it. And as long as the beef is tender, I'm happy. Here we go. Okay, I like the crispy yuca. Um, it, it is herb. It is true to the title of the dish, it's true to the description. It's, it's good. I like most things fried. I'm not very picky when it comes to fried foods, so I'm okay with the yuca being fried. What I do miss are those gorgeous mushrooms that used to be involved with the pot roast before. It came in this lovely gravy with pasta on the side and chanterelle mushrooms, and I miss those. Um, I'm gonna continue eating though, and hopefully, and hopefully I'll still be all right with it. I like the addition of the veggies in it, but I am missing those mushrooms. The last time I ate at Docking Bay 7, I had the fried chicken tip yip, the fried Andorian tip yip. That's still on the menu, but now they've added a second tip yip, and as Denny already said, it is supposed to be a, a hot chicken tip yip. So in terms of spicy, because it has the chipotle glaze on it, I'll be honest, when I looked at this dish, I thought that it was almost pork belly for a second because of the glaze. It, it had that exact same look, but when you cut through it, it is chicken all the way through, but you can distinctly tell how they have that, like, that skin on with the glaze, and it's very pretty, and I hope it's as good as it looks. I think it will be. We'll find out. It is so spicy. This thing is lighting my mouth on fire. And I am here for every second of it. It's actually, it is, it's like getting to the back of my throat and I don't have water with me right now. I'm probably gonna have to go get some. It's not gonna fix anything, maybe temporarily. It is so hot, but it is so, so good. Uh, it, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm gonna be freaking out about this heat for probably a long time. I did not expect it in any way. And what what an awesome piece of chicken. And it comes, it's supposed to come with the, uh, the white rice and then the corn kind of succotash style uh, side dish. Maybe that will cool everything down a little bit. That's exactly what it does. The, the corn and the, the rice and the other vegetables in there really help to cool off the, the heat that you get from the chicken making it a really nice, well-balanced dish. I'm a fan. Okay, I am trying what Craig just tried, the tip yip that is a little spicy now. That's a hot day today. And now it's even hotter. That is some hot chicken. My whole mouth, it takes a second. And then all everything is firing, <laughs> literally firing. Okay, if you love spicy things, that will be your new best friend. That is a spicy, legit spicy dish. And not something that you always find at a theme park counter service restaurant. It's good. Like you said, Craig, that's a really nice piece of chicken, but holy cow, water. Denny is absolutely right. It's like the, the heat level takes you to the very next level. I We're in the shade. It's kind of cool. There's a little bit of a breeze. I am now sweating because of how hot it was, you know? The first Disney take on kind of like Nashville hot chicken, I think I've had, nailed it. But Denny also sold me on really wanting to try this pot roast. So that's what I'm moving on to next. And you know, exactly how she described, just falls right apart. So that's at least a benefit. Yeah, it's good pot roast. Uh, it, it does fall apart again, as we've already described enough, so I don't know why I'm repeating that. Of all the things I could have said, I just repeated, it falls apart. Uh, I also am not really getting any of the smokiness, per se. I am getting a bit of a sweetness, so I don't know if maybe when it did get that smokiness, if there was 
something else put in that that added that that sweet profile to it but it's it's a nice piece of beef but I'm kind of like if I'm having like a pot roast I want it with mashed potatoes and gravy and lots of vegetables and so I'm not I'm not as huge on this one but don't get me wrong this is a tasty tasty piece of meat but now for yuca and the yuca does help to you know add that meat and potatoes feel to it with that tiny hit hint of sweetness but at the same time too it's really well seasoned uh you know not just not just salt and pepper there's there's a nice herb taste to it uh i, I like it i like it i'm just not blown away by it and we have a lot more to eat so i'm gonna try the endorian chicken salad roasted endorian chicken salad and um i've got a little bit of everything on it it's got a lemon pomegranate vinaigrette like we said earlier and it's got this yogurt drizzle almost like I would imagine a Rada. So we'll see, we'll see how it tastes. I've got a little bit of everything on this bite. Before we got going, I mentioned to Craig that every single one of the new five dishes has a level of spice. It says spicy this or smoky that or whatever. There's, there's something, there's a level of heat in each one of these dishes, even the dessert dish, um, or at least they're supposed to be. If you are, heat averse, this, get the chicken salad, because it's not, while I detect, I didn't have a ton of drizzle, the, the yogurt drizzle, um, on that bite I had some, and there was a little bit hint of something, but it really was overpowered by that nice vinaigrette, which is, is nice, it's not as bright as I would want it to be for having lemon involved in it, but it was just one bite. I'm going to continue eating it, and I'll share if there are any additional thoughts, but so far, so good. The old tip yip salad here was one of my favorite dishes, something that I got really often because it was, it was light, but filling and refreshing. And also just, you know, you felt okay after eating it because you don't always feel that way about anything you eat at Disney, especially salads, but this salad always rocked it. And you know, the, the new lettuce blend that they have for here is not blowing me away just by looking at it. It's like a romaine blend with maybe a little bit of, at most with a little bit of like arugula in there too, but it's not like a, a fun kale blend like before. So that's a minus, but not necessarily a game changer. You know, I'm fine with romaine. I enjoy romaine, but got a little bit of everything in this piece of chicken, one of the watermelon radishes and a grape see how it tastes. I think Denny hit the nail on the head with this. It's just kind of refreshing. Uh, there's nothing that's like jumping out to me as a dominating flavor in this. If anything is, it's kind of like just a watery flavor overall. And you know, that's that's not awesome. I think that probably has to deal with the, the vinaigrette on there, but it's not, it's not offensive. And the chicken is still really, really well roasted. You know, it's got kind of that, I don't want to say chewy outside to it, but you know, it does have that where there's actually some texture to it, but still uh, nice and and soft and, and, and perfect on the inside. So I'm not blown away by this. I think I think very similar to the pot roast. I think the, the salad change might be not for the better, but it's still not, it's not bad by any means. It's a good salad just not as good as the last one. I've never in my life had poke. And I'm having it in a theme park for my first time. I don't know, was that smart? I'm not sure. Um, but we have tuna poke on the menu here. This is one of the new dishes, and so I needed to try it. And it comes with um, a spicy sriracha dressing and some slaw. And so I'm gonna try a little bit of everything and mushrooms, cute little baby mushrooms. All right, here we go. The level of heat does not touch the hot tip yet, so that's good. I was um, I was interested in seeing what the spicy sriracha sauce was like. Not bad at all. And I've had tuna poke now. And it's, <laughs> it was tuna that had not had heat applied. That's all I can say. I have no comparison to give to it. 
Um, would I order it again if I'm on my own? Probably not, because there are actual meats on the menu that have had heat applied to them, and that's my general preference. However, was it fun to try? Absolutely. Unlike Denny, I eat too much poke. Not enough that I'm going to get myself like mercury poisoning or anything, but I, I do eat tuna poke quite a bit. Probably oh, once a week, once every other week, usually. There's a poke place like five minutes from my house, so it's a nice way to, to grab a bite that's on the healthy side, unless you eat way too much of it. But you know, that's anything. Eat, eat everything in moderation. So. I'm excited for this. The heat signature to this is very, very light. It's almost, it's almost non-existent, which isn't a bad thing, you know, it, but it, enough of it is there. I'm not sure if maybe it's the, the hot chicken that's also messing with my taste buds on it. Maybe I'd taste it a little bit more. If we would have had the, the hot chicken last, but it's a, it, it is actually pretty decent poke and you know, they, they give you a healthy portion of fish with it. And so I can't really complain about that, but I'm gonna try one more bite, but with like all the, the slaw and everything. I know we said the salad was refreshing. I actually think the poke is even more refreshing. Uh, the fish is nice. The slaw adds that crunch, but also another level of coolness to the entire dish. Not that there's any heat that needs to cool it down, but it's still there both in temperature and in and just that overall cooling factor. I like it. I like it a lot. All right, we are here for what is now the only dessert on the menu at Docking Bay 7 Food and Cargo. It is the Outpost Puff. And as someone who enjoys desserts, I am greatly looking forward to it. In fact, this was the thing I was looking forward to the most on the menu. We see, um, the Thai tea uh, puff on top. I want to get the exact, yeah, panna cotta. It's like a little puff of panna cotta on top. We've seen that before with the batu bun. So we have a, a cake <laughs> that is not easily cut into. I'm trying my very best. I got it, I got it, I got it. I think I do. All right. Um, I'm gonna get some of the green milk sauce and some of the spiced pineapple. It's like they just decided to throw all the disparate things into one dish. I don't understand. And we've got some of the Guajillo chocolate mousse, and it's a mess. I think this is really weird. <laughs> and I love chocolate. I love dessert. Give me a sweet thing, and I will love you forever. Um, but this is, so it said it's a chocolate pastry that's been filled. So you might think like an eclair, um, something along those lines, but it looks like a chocolate cake. It's not a chocolate cake. It is a chocolate, a harder chocolatey, like a, it's a shoe pastry is what it is. It's a chocolate shoe pastry, which is really, really easy to make. If you ever want to make a shoe pastry at home, you can, it's a quick way to get a beignet if you've got a beignet hankering one evening. Um, so that's what it is. And then they've also put the guajillo chocolate mousse inside and underneath, and then they've just kind of plopped everything else on it. And it all has become this, um, I wanna say convoluted kind of thing. It's, it's overall, the taste is nice, the texture is really, if you're a texture person, you're not gonna like this as much, I don't think, because there's so, like the shoe pastry is holding together and then everything else is just gooey and sloppy and runs together. I'm not, I don't, I don't have any heat from the guajillo. It's supposed to be like a medium heat. I don't feel that going on. Could be because of the hot chicken we had earlier. Who knows? Spiced pineapple, not so much. So I'm not sure I'm getting this again. And I hate to say that because it is literally the only dessert on the menu right now. But I'm gonna continue and we'll see if I've got other thoughts. I am now a little bit scared to eat this dessert because I have a love-hate relationship with chocolate and this is a lot of chocolate altogether. And if Denny doesn't have high remarks for it, then I can't imagine how I'm gonna feel about it. And the green milk thing, I'm very intrigued by that, but I don't know if it's gonna have enough flavor to actually mean anything with this. 
so I, I might as well just eat it. I don't really have anything to say about this dessert. It's light and very airy. So it's not like, it's not that dense dessert that you're like, oh, I don't know how I'll be able to walk around all day. It, it's not bad on that level. And even the chocolate is very, very mild, very milky. It's not, you don't have like these bursts of dark chocolate that are really overpowering the, the dish. There's not that like massive amount of fudge that just sends you into chocolate overload. It's actually very, very balanced for how, how much brown is on the plate. But I'm just, I'm not wild about it. I. I, I, I thought the old desserts that were here were were far superior to this one and I will not be sad when it goes because I will never be ordering it again after today. All wrapped up. All done. And now we're hiding from the Florida rain. It's delightful. Yeah, it's normal. But <laughs> Denny, what were your overall thoughts? Which dishes would you get again? Which ones did you think weren't up to snuff? What's your thoughts? Gosh, Craig, it's a good question. I um, I wanted to love the the two and beef. I wanted to love the new dish that they did with the stir fry veggies, the whole nine yards. But I didn't. I really didn't. For eighteen ninety nine, what you get in that dish is nowhere near what you used to get with the old the two and beef or the braised shack roast. Uh, and so that's really disappointing. So I'm gonna steer clear of that. I'm gonna steer clear of um, the Outpost Puff. Unfortunately, that dessert just does not work. It just doesn't. Um, I don't know what the combination, the magic combination is, but they've not quite hit it. Uh, I do give them points for creativity, but man, it, it did not hit the mark. Oddly enough, the Pirjanad, um, Hot chicken. Chicken <laughs> is. I, I don't do spicy stuff, but if you are looking for something that is packed with flavor, that will make you, that I feel like has value for the money spent. Yeah, for fifteen. That's the way to go. Fifteen forty nine. Okay. Yeah. That's that's the route to go. Um, but overall, and and gosh, I love Docking Day Seven, but man, I am I'm disappointed. Yeah, this was a tough one. I I also thought the poke was delicious overall. I ate every bit of fish in there, and that one was $17.99. And it was good, but, you know, it was... It, it still... Would I get it again? Probably not, unless I really wanted poke and also happened to be here. The, the hot chicken was by far the best. That was an awesome addition to the menu. I, I will get that again for sure. The the beef, the pot roast, I did, I ended up clearing the end of the dish uh, after Denny was done with it and <laughs> I ate the rest of it. And a lot of the stir fry vegetables were at the bottom and they were actually really nice once you got to them. But they were all just kind of hidden at the bottom. So that was, that was a bummer. But once I got to it, it's like, okay, I get this a little bit more, but still at $18.99, that's a little bit pricey for that one. And then with the salad, uh, the salad was thirteen forty nine, I believe. Yes. Was that one? And that was okay. It was watery though. But yeah. I, I didn't. <laughs> yeah. You drained the salad yeah. at one point. I did. As we got to the end, I completely drained the salad. There was so much water in it, and I could have used more of just the like the herb cream that was on there. I can't remember the exact description of it. Yeah but that was really nice. That was better than whatever whatever lemon vinaigrette style lemon dressing. Lemon pomegranate, and that, yeah. yeah, that was a creamy yogurt drizzle. Yeah, the creamy yogurt drizzle, that was good. It was herby. It was very, very nice. It needed more of that, less of the lemon pomegranate, but it still wasn't bad. It's not as good as the old salad. I would get that salad again when I wanted a salad here, but you know, then factoring in the other two items on the menu that did not go away were the the kadu rib right. and then the fried and dorian tip yep mm -hmm. and i would say the only i would probably eat the hot chicken over the tip yep yes still i yes. i like the hot chicken that was that was really really good um but yeah overall i'm just i'm not i'm not super impressed with the the new addition sadly but so sad 
one good item out of it. And the nice part is knowing that they are willing to change the menu at Docking Bay 7. So I don't, uh, it's the first menu we had for over a year and we'll see how long we have this menu and maybe it will change in the future and we'll have new favorites or returning old ones. Mm, that would be great. That would, that would be Love great. It. And I think that's it for our review. So I know it was a lot, but I still hope that you enjoyed it. And if you did, and you want to support us because you enjoyed it, please consider booking your next vacation through Dreams Unlimited Travel. Again, it costs you no extra money and it supports us. So get a free no obligation quote at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Also on your way out, please hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and leave comments, questions, and video suggestions in the comment section below. That's it for myself and Denny here with this Disney dining review. Take care. Bye-bye. Till the spire. <laughs>